Welcome to Easy Limo Learning Simplified. My name is Eric. I'll be taking you through this topic, rate, ratio, proportion, and percentages. So this is a topic that carries about uh, four concepts in one. So we are going to look at them just one after the other as we shall be progressing with the topic. So for this uh, lesson, we look at rate. We will try to find out what rate is and uh, what that involves, you know. So uh, as we start, we will try to see what is the meaning of rate. And uh, we shall have a few sample questions on uh, rate to just to see how we solve problems involving rate, you know. At the end of the lesson, we will try to give you some assignment to help you practice and to check your understanding of the concept as discussed during this lesson. So what does it mean when you talk about rate? So we say rate is a way of comparing one quantity with another of a different kind. For example, speed. Now, speed, we can be finding out if, let's say, a vehicle is moving from point A to point B. So, so we have a vehicle moving here from point A to point B, covering this distance, you know, maybe in meters. Maybe distance in meters. So distance in the vehicle is covering the distance in meters. You know, so it, it also takes time. You know, you, uh, moving from point A to point B has to take some time. You know, so it could be time in seconds. So you want to find out every second this vehicle covers what distance. So maybe the vehicle could be covering about you no. Know, if it is a fast moving vehicle, maybe it could be moving at, let's say, 20 meters. You know, 20 meters, one second, you count one, it has gone 20 seconds. You see, see that is rate. Saying for every 20 seconds, so maybe from point A to point B, it took like, let's say, maybe four hours, for example. You see, or let me say it. It could be a short distance that it took maybe just five, five seconds to move from point A to point B. Now, these five seconds, the vehicle may be covered 25 kilometers. So you want to know if point A, from point A to point B, this vehicle took five seconds. Then every second this vehicle covers, what distance? So you see, we have 25 here for five seconds. What about one second? You know, that is what we're trying to find out. So that could be about maybe, maybe five meters. The vehicle is covering five meters in one single second, something like that. You see, that is for us as a slow moving vehicle. So any comparison that is involving two different quantities, you can see like. When you talk about something like speed, we are comparing distance, which is one quantity, and time. That's why you say comparing one quantity with another of a different kind. So every time you see that kind of comparison, you see, you could be talking about number of people feeding on a particular meal, you know, you know, maybe if you are to prepare some chapatis you know you you, you are to use packets of, of of flour for example how many people per packet if you are to use packets you know so you could be comparing number of people to number of packets of flour for example you see or a number of people sharing some amount of money so you could be talking of how much money per person, for example, you know. So we are comparing money to human beings, people. So every time you have a comparison that is involving uh, quantities that are different, then that is what we are calling, that is what we are calling red. Yes. So there are different ways you want to see various examples of that. So we have a first example here. There is a laborer's wage is uh, 240 per night per eight working hour day. It means this person is working for 
eight hours in a day and they are paid 240 for that particular working day so what is the rate of payment per hour so see we are now comparing money to hours so i want to see this person is paid 240 shillings Let's see for how many hours eight hours so you want to see in one hour this person is paid how much you see yes it's supposed to be 240 here so 240 shillings the person is working for eight hours so one hour what is the wage for one hour you see so maybe you could talk of eight i mean you multiply this by this and then you divide by the other one so you talk of one times 240 divided by eight and that is giving us uh 30 so 8 goes into 24 here three times so it means 240 divided by 8 is 30 shillings per per hour you see this is rate so 30 shillings per hour this was 240 per day or per eight hour working day so if you are to find the rate of payment per hour then it's supposed to be 30 shillings per hour so that is one way of looking at it so let's look at this second example here what is the rate of consumption per per day if 12 bags of beans you see now this is people feeding on some bags of beans so they could be students in school you know they are prepared lunch and they're supposed to be uh, part of their meal uh, maybe on, on certain days is supposed to be maybe rice and beans so maybe the school management is uh, finding out what is the daily consumption you know of beans so that they are able to budget and see what is the budget that will be enough for a given number of days in a term for example you see so it's basically for planning purposes that is why it's also important that we learn about this so we are talking about 12 bags of beans is able to serve these people for 120 days so we want to find out one day you see rate per day so one day so what is what what is it so you see you just take this one here you multiply by that and then divide by that so rate here rate you know consumption uh, consumption per day if you say per day it means it's supposed to be divided by the number of days per hour divided by the number of hours whatever quantity you're talking about so per day we divide by the number of days so it's going to be uh, twelve bags divided by Uh, 120 days so consumption per day so take note of this one here per per hour it means we are dividing by the whatever the quantity that we have there we divide it by the number of hours so this one per day we divide by the number of days so you see so this is going to be 0 0.0.1 0 .1 bugs Per day you see so this word here is important when it comes to determining rate like how many hours i mean how many kilometers per hour how many meters per second so every time this one here is used 
it means you are dividing by that. Whatever the quantity you are talking about, you divide it by this unit here. So let's see. Again, you can see per, per day. So it means the quantity you have, you'll be dividing by number of days. You see, number of days. So we have a factory that is producing 4,200 rolls of barbed wire in a five day working week. What was the rate of the production of rolls per, per day? So we are supposed to divide by the number of days, you see. So rate of production, you know, rate of production per day here. Yeah. A day is going to be four hundred and uh, four thousand two hundred rolls divided by the number of days. How many days? Five days. Because we are told a five day working week. So you know this this term week here can be so confusing. So take note the the information given is a five-day working week. So it's a week, yes, but part of that week, they're not working. So they're only working for five days, you know. So if you do this again, what do we get? We get eight, four, zero. See, five goes into 42, you know, Eight because of forty, remainder is two. So twenty-four, and then you add the zero there. So eight hundred and forty rolls per per day. Yes, that's how. So that within the five days they're able to make four thousand two hundred rolls. You know. So this word per is very important when it comes to calculations involving rate you see every time you see the word per you divide by take the total quantity divide by the unit that is number of units that, are, that that is mentioned here okay good so we're making good progress so a train took two hours to travel a distance of 69 kilometers what was its average speed so when I was talking about speed uh, when you were beginning, I, I said speed is uh, distance covered per second, you know, per hour, per millisecond, and any other unit of time that you may talk about. So you say it's basically the distance covered, so speed, you know, you know calculate the speed, you know, the average speed, you know. So speed distance distance traveled per unit unit time. So again per time. So you're supposed to divide by time, you know. Yes. So it then means speed. So this speed here is going to be kilometers per hour, per hour, kilometers per hour. Why? Why am I saying kilometers per hour? Because distance is given in kilometers and the time is, you know, you said per, time, per, unit time, you see? So the time is in hours and distance in kilometers. So it could be meters per second as well. Time can also be measured in seconds, you know, milliseconds and so on and so forth. So we have 69 kilometers per, so time is two hours. So this is going to be three, four point five kilometers per, per hour. Again, take note, this is forward slash. This is this forward slash is interpreted to mean per. So every time you are, you are, to, just maybe doing your personal study and you come across this this one here you know it is read as per so you could talk of two meters per 
second. So that forward slash we call it par. You know, that is that is how it's read, you know. So 34.5 uh, kilometers per hour. Again, this H here, no, don't have to write it in full. The H here stands for hour km kilometers then per per hour so uh, that is uh, all that we needed to discuss for this lesson we have uh, a few questions here to help you practice what we have learned uh, about rate so you can see first question a typist is typing a number of words but you are supposed to calculate a rate of typing per that's what we have just discussed so you divide whatever quantity up there by minutes to get the number of words per minute again let's see what was his rate of payment per so you'll be dividing by the number of months again you can see you know uh, how many bags of wheat would he harvest from if he maintained the rate so this bit of an application, see, a farmer harvested 200 bags of wheat from a two acre, you know, farm of his, uh, two acres of his farm. How many bags of wheat would he harvest from uh, 16 acre if he maintained the rate? So here, a bit of application of what we learned up there, where now you are given the rate, you know, then you are supposed to calculate the quantity. Yes. So remember, rate is given by some total quantity divided by maybe some unit there. So it's 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 application of what we are learning here. So you can attempt. Should you face any difficulty, you are always free to ask questions. You will be able to respond in the due course accordingly. Otherwise, that marks the end of the lesson. Until next time. Bye.